Hey guys, it's uh, Fernando from SkyFi Audio. Um, I was geeking out in the lab just a few minutes ago with this uh, Krell Phono Preamp that just arrived. It's a, uh, a Krell KPA uh, Phono Preamp. It can be used uh, standalone as a Phono Preamp or together with the KBL, which is the matching preamplifier that we also have kicking around. Um, I particularly love the internal construction, that's why I thought I'd share uh, this quick video with you guys. So the, the KPA can uh, be used as a standalone, I said, or with the KBL, um, and they can share the same power supply. So um, there's an external power supply that goes with the KBL, and you can daisy chain from that one into the back of this uh, KPA, and I'll show you. It's done through this uh, DB9 connector here, this DC input. Um, back to the front. Um, there are plenty of connections on here or, or controls available. There is uh, two sets of phono inputs, which is really cool in case you've got a turntable with dual tone arms or uh, two separate turntables as many of our, uh, of our customers do. And let me go through the rest of the functions. So because you have to adjust um, independently every time you switch between phono one and phono two, uh, they provide a really neat uh, middle uh, step, which is the mute button here. So if you're on phono one um, and you want to switch, let's say it's a moving coil uh, cartridge and you want to switch to phono two, you simply go to mute, make your adjustments. Yes, you will have to remember what your adjustments are. You'll have to memorize them as there will be different gain settings uh, and different uh, loading depending on your cartridge. Um, once you land on phono two, you're all set to go with a second set of inputs. Uh, over here, um, you'll see the, the loading uh, for the cartridge, anywhere between 47.5K to 10. Um, the next switch over is the gain. This is to essentially select between moving coil and moving magnet. Uh, balanced is uh, the ability to, and this is pretty neat, um, both the KPA and the KBL have the ability to be stereo pieces or mono pieces. So technically, you could take uh, two of these or two of the preamp and making them to dual monos, meaning uh, left channel, right channel. So you end up with uh, up to four pieces, which is a, a really neat top, top of the line setup for, for Crowell or really any brand. Uh, there are very few dual mono preamps out there. And um, this is certainly one of them. Now this would have been vintage from around uh, mid nineties and it costs quite a bit. I'm guessing this was probably you know, a $5,000 preamp and probably another three, four grand for the phono section. Um, and why is the phono section not part of the KBL? Well, you know, in the 90s, uh, CDs were rocking and rolling, so a lot of manufacturers um, would leave the phono section out to reduce cost. Um, in Krell's defense, that's probably not why. They probably just thought it'd be a better execution to have a two-box design. And you can tell by its complexity. I mean, look at the parts count in there. This is a really complex and very well-planned uh, phono preamp. You couldn't fit this inside of a stereo preamp. Um, so I digress. Back to the controls, guys. Uh, so the balance would allow you to essentially use two of these KPAs as a single phono preamp, left channel and right channel. And, the, and uh, moving over to the right, you've got uh, RIAA trim. Um, this affects uh, the low end of the equalization curve, so you can kind of tweak uh, the low end response of your cartridge to get what you like the best. Um, and these LEDs would light up uh, if you're off of the, the neutral setting, the neutral here being at the top. As soon as you move to the right, the LEDs would indicate that you've gone off of the, the main trim. So it's plus to minus uh, to the left and to the right. Moving on to the back. The DC in, as I mentioned, is the power supply input. Uh, and the KBL has a external power supply, so you could power both the KBL and the KPA off of a single power supply, which is kind of nice. Um, balanced and single-ended outputs, which is uh, pretty unique. I think the balance is what you'd use for the, if you use it in mono configuration, there are standard RCAs for outputs and then dual inputs and a single ground connection, uh, again, for photo one and photo two, depending on how many you're using. Let's take a look at the internals a bit. First thing you'll notice is that they use these connecting rods in 
order to place the potentiometers in the absolute best place possible. So rather than have to compromise and move them to the front of the board, they wanted them to be as close to the uh, inputs and outputs as possible. Uh, they run these long shafts connected to the uh, potentiometer knob. Common in, in a lot of designs, but um, certainly executed here by curl that way. And um, just a plethora of stuff. I mean, it's really crazy. And the parts quality is top, top notch. As you can see, high quality PC boards, um, you know, mil spec resistors, transistors, etc. This uh, center section here is likely to be the power supply. Even though you're using external, there's some additional regulation that's uh, local to the unit. So this is your input selection here. This is your loading, cartridge loading here, power supply. And then to the right, we're going to see the two RIAA, RIAA trim controls. And uh, I guess they use a ton of resistors in order to load them up. So they probably just keep adding them to the signal path. Okay, well that's it, a beautiful uh, metal chassis, uh, style of Corel from the 90s and a brush crate finish which is pretty striking. And a very heavy uh, gauge steel. Yeah, very, very sweet piece from Corel, Corel KPA. Thanks for watching guys, if you like this video please subscribe to our channel and check our website for new arrivals. Um, skyfiaudio.com is the URL and over there you'll see a way to subscribe to our newsletter as well in case you want to be alerted every time something new and interesting comes in. Thanks for watching guys.